Today, we're going to do a workshop where you're going to be able to deploy your own Rust ERC721. That is, we're going to make NFTs together um, using the Rust programming language and Arbitrum Stylus. Um, so if you actually want to follow along and, and deploy this NFT, which you're going to see um, is pretty cool and straightforward, um, you'll need to go to this link. So there's this GitHub repo. And um, if you follow along with this, you'll be able to actually create your NFT and use it to do a bunch of fun stuff. Um, so this workshop kind of has two parts to it. Um, in the beginning here, while we're all getting um, the things installed on that GitHub page um, set up, so that's just like the Rust programming language, uh, Cargo Stylus, the tool we use to actually um, you know, deploy stylus programs and some free testnet ether. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're low on testnet ETH, we have that too. All of that is on this page here. So this is on the off-chain labs account. There is a stylus workshop NFT repo, and um, we'll look at this together. So while everyone's setting that up, um, we're going to look at an example ERC721 implementation together um, to try and learn a little bit more about like, um, how Rust and stuff works from a perspective of a Solidity developer and what actually working in it in, a, in an Arbitrum setting looks like. Um, and then um, at, the, at the end, we'll just uh, work on NFTs together. So, okay. So this repo is where you want to go. I'll show the link again later, but it's on the off-chain labs. Just search Stylus Workshop NFT. Uh, that'll take you to this repo here. And um, it's very, it's kind of what you expect from a Git repo. You just uh, clone this thing. And okay, good, you can see this. Um, I'm gonna jump into code together, but just real quick. So you're gonna install Rust. You're gonna install Cargo Stylus and like here's the commands for it. And then you're gonna get some free testnet ether from this faucet. Um, so you won't have to like buy anything, you can just do it. Um, okay, so yeah, you'll just go through this repo. Um, we hope too later that, you know, this will be of educational value just looking at this code together, but um, let's do a little deep dive together with it. So. Um, I'm going to open it up in my editor. Um, you're going to find that when you look at this NFT project, there is this source directory and various files in it. There's only a few. The first one, which will be of um, particular interest to anybody who's actually, you know, done a lot of work with Solidity before, um, is this 721.rs. So .rs is the extension for Rust. And um, you'll actually see as we scroll through this together that what it means to write an ERC721 in Stylus using Rust is actually quite similar to what it means in Solidity. Um, you'll find that um, every program begins with a set of storage definitions. Um, and you'll notice that using the Stylus SDK, that is the special Rust library that Offchain Labs provides, um, you're actually able to declare the various pieces of state using Solidity syntax. So. You'll notice here that this ERC721, this is the object that implements, um, that actually implements the interface that um, provides that NFT standard. You'll notice that it has a few pieces of state. It has a mapping of uint 256s to addresses. Those are owners of various token IDs. Um, it's got approvals and balances and all of that good stuff, right? All the stuff you would expect from that standard. So from the perspective of somebody actually using um, Stylus, you just declare the various pieces of state that you want, oftentimes by just copying and pasting uh, whatever Solidity definitions that you like um, into your code, and you use this special macro called soul storage for it. Um, definitely feel free to read the code in further detail later to um, you know, really grok like, all the ins and outs of it. But you're just going to notice, just from a high level, like looking at this together, we've got events that are declared much the same way as in Solidity. We've got errors um, and all of that good stuff. And What's kind of cool about Rust is the way the methods work um, is similar. So there's this uh, there's this external macro that we often apply, and that actually allows you to declare each of the methods of your um, of your smart contract um, and have them be exposed to the world in the same way a Solidity smart contracts methods are marked external. So when you look at these Rust definitions, like for example this name or this symbol or um, this balance of right. This, will, this should look eerily similar to what you would see in Solidity, right? Well, here's the cool thing. You can actually call it from Solidity. Um, because under the hood, the Stylus SDK uses the same Solidity ABI, um, 
every contract written in Rust really just like looks like a Solidity contract. And I say Rust here, but of course the Stylus SDK has other languages too. Um, and so what that means actually, by the way, is that without any modifications to a DEX, say like Uniswap or, or pick your favorite, right? Um, you can actually deploy and list Rust smart contracts like Rust tokens, Rust NFTs, whatever, um, to these standard protocols without those protocols having to have any kinds of modifications. So you just write your code in whatever language you like. And then from the perspective of the chain, everything just looks like solidity. Um, and you know, different methods, do different things like transferring the NFT around or approving other accounts to be able to spin the NFT on your behalf. That's a pretty dangerous thing, actually, um, as numerous exploits have shown. But the really cool part about this is like this standard, this ERC721 standard that, you've, that you're very familiar with if you've ever worked with uh, NFTs before, um, can be replicated in different languages. And all that really looks like is just providing definitions for each of those mechanisms uh, or meet each of those methods in in Rust or in whatever language we're thinking of. And you'll actually notice that the Stylus SDK that um, you know you can download on that page um, has all of the affordances you would expect to have in, a, in an EVM environment. Um, so for example, you're actually able to emit logs and you're able to, well, you can't really do this as easily in Solidity, but you can print to the console and stuff. There's all sorts of really nice things that you're able to do, like inspect your message sender or um, transfer value around, have payable methods a lot of great stuff. So I strongly recommend reading the um, ERC721 file uh, under the source directory for a bit of a nice parallel side by side. But there's actually more that we're able to do because this is Rust. So um, if you actually go to the art.rs file, you're going to see that together uh, we're going to make some NFTs here. So because this is Rust, which has like really nice low level types and stuff, um, you can actually do things like import an existing image library and create PNGs from your application on-chain. That's right, the NFT that we're going to be making today um, is entirely on-chain. So there's no like hash that it stores and some other website that's trusted pre presents the data or whatever. All of this stuff happens on-chain, is fully generative, and, um, you know, just, you know, has all that censorship resistance, all those pro great properties that you would have of a fully on-chain product. And what's cool about it is um, instead of having to like say in Solidity, right, like do a bunch of like low level assembly code, um, you just use familiar programming paradigms and like nice uh, high level constructs when, when working on your stuff. Okay, so from the purpose of today's tutorial, and you'll see this also on the GitHub repo, um, there is a function that we're gonna modify together to create new NFTs. So there's this generate NFT function and it takes as an input the token ID. So that's like which you know, every, every new NFT has a unique identifier and that identifier you can use to generate different kinds of art. Um, and you'll see that in this example project, um, you're able to generate an image and then make modifications to that image um, in a procedural manner. So here we're drawing a gradient, we draw a line on it, uh, then we draw another line that goes from this point to that point, we draw an ellipse. And let me just actually show you what that looks like. So um, what's really cool about this is um, because this is Rust and you have access to the console, we can actually print our NFT out. So take a look at this together. Those steps that I showed earlier, we have, well, from the top left corner to the bottom right, we have the gradient line. This was that, this was that draw gradient. And then we have various lines to make the eyeballs in this picture. And then the ellipse to make the smiley face. Um, and what's so cool about this is it shows that the future of actually like working on blockchain applications is one where all the familiar tooling that you already have is much more easily accessible, right? Like if we're able to have languages like Rust, we get test cases from Rust and stuff like that. And I'm actually using that to generate different versions of this NFT. Um, you'll notice that in the code uh, right now, the only way it varies is the color it uses for the smiley face. But hey, you can notice here that with different identifiers, I can each time print this out. So what's really cool about that too is it, it means that like debugging and working on your NFT is actually really straightforward because um, you actually have access to like a really nice console where you can like do all of the things that you'd expect uh, in tracing and all of that good stuff. So, um, you know, you can just use a simple command, which you'll see in the GitHub repo to print your NFT out. And by the way, uh, here's actually a website that's showing them. Um, I changed, the internet's kind of a problem, but I'll get it to reconnect. But um the, the cool thing here is like when you guys using that 
GitHub repo to pull your NFT, it's going to show up on this web page. So if someone wants to draw something and edit that code together, um, you're going to be able to actually change what's on this screen. So that's kind of fun. And how this is literally working is it's just reading the blockchain, looking for any deployments of this contract. Um, let me actually show you what it looks like to deploy it. Okay, so um, assuming I have internet, we're going to make sure. You actually have this really cool tool called Cargo Stylus that we use. Um, the installation instructions are there, but it's it's really simple. It's just a single line. But what Cargo Stylus lets you do is, um, well, you can check and deploy transactions. So, um, you know, when you're programming your code, it's often good to like run test cases to make sure things work. And um, what this Cargo Stylus check tool does is it will actually go and make sure that if we were to go deploy this to the blockchain, that everything works. And um, if you go and you've, you know, made some changes to your NFT, you can run, um, actually, I need a private key file. So let me uh, find that previously in my history. You can actually run Cargo Stylus Deploy and then point that to a private key somewhere. And it will then go and deploy and then activate your NFT on chain. And what's so cool about that is in just like one little step, right, using these very familiar Rust tools, Cargo is like the standard Rust tool. Um, you know, we're able to, with Stylus, have just some minor, some minor extensions, and then suddenly, bam, you've got all this great on-chain goodness. So um, I think our goal today is this. Now that we've kind of like taken a look at various, um, you know, we've, lo we've looked together at uh, uh, how the code works. Um, I invite everybody to take a big deeper dive or whatever. Um, let's actually edit these NFTs together. So, um, you know, we can just take this function, this generate NFT function, and make whatever modifications we want. So for example, maybe I want to add another line, right? Um, all you got to do to do that is in your editor, um, you know, you add another line that says line and then pick another position to start drawing from. So maybe I'll start from the coordinate 810 and draw all the way to the coordinate, I guess, um, 15, 16. That sounds fun. That'll be nice and diagonal. And you can pick what color you want to draw it in, right? So um, maybe I'll pick another... Maybe we'll pick another hex color. Um, I like, let's do pink. Let's do actually a nice stylus pink. So the stylus hex code is E3066E. So that should draw a pink line if, if, uh, if our reasoning was right. And so, well, let's just test it. Let's just make sure NFT works. And hey, there it is. There's our pink line, right? And what's so fun about that is there's this like really nice like iterative feedback you can do when you're working in your work in Rust. Um, like, don't get me wrong, in the Solidity world, we have hard hat, we have, well, truffle sunsetted, but like you have all this like great stuff, right? And, um, you know, you'll actually find that like printing to the console or doing things like that are kind of high friction, you know, it's, it's not really super well supported. Um, and you have to use these kind of awkward function signatures. Well, in, in this paradigm, um, you can just like do all the familiar stuff that you're used to. And by the way, that includes with like uh, debugging and, and all the familiar tools. We're soon to release um, the ability to do GDB on the blockchain. So you'll be able to like, when you're in the middle of your smart contract, if, if something goes wrong, you might want to like go jump in and see what exactly went wrong. Um, well, you can then fire up GDB. This is a very common debugger that people use in Rust or C, et cetera. And just go see for yourself um, what exactly went wrong and step through it and use all that without having to um, like learn new, tool learn new tooling and stuff. Okay, so um, I think since we've looked at this together, let's, uh, I'm, I'm just, we're just going to go around the room and um, help anyone who wants to set up an NFT do so. And uh, yeah, get these deployed and shown up here. So that's part one of the talk. Let's do it. Let's collaborate. <laughs>